It's your boy KK back with another banger. Yes, so let me get straight into it. So basically, this is a story time of when I'd finished uni, one of my first employments um, within like the investment banking space. Obviously, so I went to City, City of London Uni. Um, I sort of grew up in East London. And I went to uni, didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do, like many of us when I when I came out of uni. Um, I knew I wanted to be rich, like that was it. Like, I just knew I wanted to make money, I didn't know how. I was buying and selling sneakers, all of that. You know, NFTs, you name it. I was just trying to make money um, by any sort of avenue, really, which was obviously legal. Uh, <laughs> let's not go there. But yeah, so I finished uni and I, I didn't really know what to do with myself. Didn't know, you know, what, what to go into. I'd applied for a whole bunch of internships, failed. Like, I didn't have a good sort of mentoring system in uni to make sure that I would secure an internship. Because if you were to go into finance, a lot of people know your best bet is getting that work experience early, you know, using family connections. Sometimes you could even go to like, like, you know, if you have family members in, let's say Africa and they're working in finance, go down there. Like it is completely unique. That's what I want to kind of make this channel about, like different unique opportunities within finance to help you guys, you know, have the best um, kickstart to your career more or less. Um, so yeah, let me jump back into the story. So I finished, I graduated. Um, I graduated now and I graduated in the year of COVID so I didn't really have a formal graduation or anything um, but yeah so I was looking for work um, I signed up with a charity called Elba East London Business Alliance I'll put a link in the description because them guys are killing it man they, they really help a lot of young black people get into the professional workspace and they're fantastic with it um, so yeah I was working I had this mentorship program through Elba um and they more or less mentored me with 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 a guy in, in in commodities he was he was quite a senior position in commodities um at, at a pretty pretty big um, investment bank so i was having these weekly mentoring sessions with him bear in mind i'm just like a, a street kid from east london like i, I didn't know no better i'd gone uni but you know i was still like you know just running around doing nonsense really and truly um so I wasn't polished. I wasn't very polished at all. And to be in the corporate sense, you need to be polished in that respect. And I was very far from it. But he had grown up in East London as well, in Ilford. And he was like, I'll say he was about 35, 40. Um, and he was giving me a lot of advice, how to like, you know, if I want this, I better take, you know, full responsibility of over this and, you know, continue to push on and, and, and do so. So we did a lot of career development. He checked my CV, this and that. Everything was smooth. Um, I started improving. I started getting better with my communication. Uh, started getting better with my interviews. I was actually getting interviews before, like no one was even checking my CVs. I had a couple for sort of FinTech companies um, and a whole bunch of different interviews. But I wasn't gaining, I wasn't getting that far, but I knew, you know, eventually something's gonna amount to it. Um, and yeah, one day, uh, what's it called? I I'll call him uh, just for confidential, um, sort of confidential side. I'm just gonna call him Steve. Steve called me up from the investment bank, my mentor. He called me up and was like, yo, um, do you wanna talk to a recruiter at the investment bank? I'm like, me? <laughs> Why not? Yeah, let, let me talk to a recruiter. So I talked to the recruiter now and uh, we had gone back and forth um, and he was just like getting to know me. I told him about me selling sneakers, etc., coming out of uni, what I studied and sort of how I knew Tav. And he, he took a liking to me. He was like, oh, we don't have anything now, but um, I think there's a position coming up. It's an entry position and I think you'll do great at it. So a couple of weeks go by and um, he gives me a message. He gives me an email. He's like, oh, would you like a second stage interview? I'm like, second stage? Were you that the first one was an interview? I thought we were just having a catch up. I'm like, sweet, all right, cool. So I did the second stage, um, which was sweet. It went perfect. Like, couldn't have gone better. The two, the two people interviewing really liked me. I was able to conduct myself well in the interview and just give a lot of sort of 
um, personal experience and, and work experience relating it to the role um, and sort of yeah leveraging on the fact that you know I, I knew Tav and Tav was quite senior so they kind of respected that they kind of thought this guy is being mentored by uh, one, one of the big guys um, so that was cool um, they were like yeah we really like you why don't you come in to our office to um, uh, interview for, for, for the position with, with our sort of manager who manages that sort of desk I was like alright cool let me come in so I came in now a bit nervous but I kid you not this woman was the most attractive interviewer I've ever interview had an interview with so I was like ah god damn it man I'm already nervous now I'm gonna be even more nervous but I was a young and like sort of bubbly kid so I I, I kind of was liking it but I was still kind of nervous but once we got in I kind of saw that she was like making me feel a bit more comfortable like the sort of conversation we're having weren't just interview style so I was like all right this is going pretty decent she was saying she lives like you know in East London she lives in Canning Town um and I told her a bit about my sneaker business and she was like well you could get me some Yeezys like we were just bantering and then you know obviously talking about the job as well so I was like wow this interview this interview's going good um and it did go good like I got a call from HR probably like a week or so later telling me that I've got the job um so they sent me an offer I'm gonna, I'm gonna clip the the offer in here they sent me an offer um I believe the salary was about 35 but it was an entry position within a year you know that's not including bonuses so it was decent it was decent um and i was i was i was delighted i was over the moon i was like wow this is this is a good opportunity for me let's get it cracking um and then yes so they asked for you know all, all information sort of wanted to do the background checks this and that and this where it gets a bit you know a bit rocky <laughs> so similar to like you know football trials once you get signed you need to go through you know the fucking um uh you need to you need to do your medical and you need to pass your medical so background checks i had no issue like i had you know all the things on my cv were accurate like i'd been at all them employment so i, I had no issue like going through into it um but yeah then i then i um, got a call saying that oh, uh, um, some of my background, some of my background checks haven't gone gone through. Um, is it all right if I can get a reference for for one of my old jobs? And I was like, all right, let me get the reference. So I got the reference from them, and I sent it back to them. Another week had gone by. I was like, oh, is there any update on my application on my background checks? Um, and then they responded to me, I believe it was by email, telling me, yo, listen, we're gonna we're gonna have to withdraw this offer. And I'm like, huh? What did I do? <laughs> Just, what did I do? Like, is there have I got some sort of criminal record? Like I was squeaky clean, like I was, you know, squeaky clean kid kid. So I'm like, but this this there's gotta be a mistake. So I tell Tav, obviously, this is what Macquarie is saying. They're saying they, they, they want to withdraw the offer because the background checks haven't gone through. Um, and, and and they're saying it's based, um, they, they later said it was based on uh, the fact that I had um, a an, an, uh, uh, discrepancy with the, the term time of one of my employments. And I was like, and, and it was only off by like a couple of months, like three months or so. And... I had told them on my CV, I just put, you know, the dates I remember my last paycheck because that was the time of my last paycheck. So this is what I was telling them. So I sent all the information to Tav saying, yo, listen, this is this is what I was saying. And Tav was Tav was the top G. Like he was he was helping me out. So I sent him all the information. He was fighting my corner. Um and he came back to me like a week or so later saying I've been battling, but they they didn't they're not budging type of thing. Like how could you make this mistake? I'm like this mistake is like a couple of months. Are you, are you serious? Like, they're like, he's like to me, yeah, they, they take all this stuff so serious because um, of, um, uh, they want their employees to be transparent and this and that. It can kind of give a feel of uh, what you are in the future. I'm like, 
Listen, mate, tell me you didn't have the budget and let's just cut the BS. But then I come to realize that, you know, a lot of finance companies, a lot of these high, high ticket positions um, had a similar process. You know, they, they were very meticulous when it came to ensuring that each of these dates were accurate. Like um, they're trying to say that I was trying to cover an employment gap in X, Y and Z, but it wasn't it wasn't the case. Like my, my last paycheck was, you know, three months after I had left the company. But formally that time period, which I got from my reference, was the period I was meant to quote, quote, but they weren't trying to budge on it. So I was like, you know what, let's just let's just move on. We'll, we'll find something else, which we did. But I just wanted to give that story out there because I've been through plenty of other sort of things, um, career-wise and even financial-wise, which I, I like to shed light on, just to help the young ones not make the same mistakes and just have that sort of mindset going into certain things. Um, to just ensure that everything is covered, you know. Um, I'm gonna start a little mentoring, mentoring uh, sort of program. Um, so I'm gonna put the details in in, in the link um, in in the description as well as my social. So if you have any other questions, want me to check your CV, or just wanna you know see how you can develop and get a good role in investment banking, um, sort of let me know. Um, I'm gonna do a follow up video. I still were given my current um, situation, where I'm current, what I'm currently doing and what I'm currently working on. Um, and then we're going to go transition back into sort of, you know, career development, fitness, uh, mentality, business, you name it. So there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff on here and good story times. I'm also going to try and incorporate some, some other surprises, you know, little motives here and there, you know, um, both in the event space and so we're just get, having, having a good time, you know, summer's here, you know, I'm, I'm going out, you know, I want to show a bit of that side. Uh, just keep it free flowing, see what, see what rocks the boat, see what works and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But thank you for taking time to listen to this video and uh, peace out, like and subscribe.